I am going to share my screen with you. We're going to go through the AB stuff first, and then whatever's left of the BC stuff, we'll do that after, okay? All right. I am probably the only teacher still left teaching, right? <laughs> it's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. And you guys need to be here to start with AB. Okay, so we should be on this, and you guys got to stop me. Okay, if you have questions, okay. All right. Um, so we're looking at, it looks like a nice graphical stem, okay. Um, graph the f function, continuous function f with the domain between negative 8 and 12 consists of line segments and is shown in the graph. In the figure above, the function g is defined by, and they gave us g, find the x-coordinate of each critical point, and then it looks like we need to also determine relative minimum, okay? And this is actually totally Paula's question that she was asking me, and she's not here. I feel really bad now. <laughs> so, um, good thing I recorded it, right? So, because she also texted me or emailed me about 2.15 saying, where are you? <laughs> Aren't we meeting today? <laughs> so, all right. So, the graph of the function f is, okay, so we've got the x coordinate of critical, we've got to do g. So we basically, to get critical points, we need the derivative of g. So I know to take a derivative, the derivative and the integral cancel. And Maddie, on the bc1, is the g exactly the same or does it look a little different? Yeah, it's the same. Okay. Um, and uh, so we know that those cancel. I take this guy and slap them in there. So we know that g prime is f of x. Um, so this is actually the G prime graph. So I'm using that to help me and I might as well go ahead and do my sign chart. It looks like it's going to cover parts A and B for me. So this is, um, we're going to talk about G prime, which is F and we're going to look for the zeros or we're going to look for zeros and we're going to look at above below. Okay. So between negative eight and it looks like the first zero is two. And we don't have to do, I'm looking ahead real quick. There we, it's not um, second derivative, so we're good. That's a negative two, Ms. Ballard. Thank you. It's going to be rough because yeah, I just woke up, right? <laughs> I got you. I did get up early this morning, so as always. Um, so four, five, six. And then 12. All right, so it looks like I am above, below, below, above. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so find the x coordinate of critical points. They don't ask me to explain it. They just say find the x coordinate of critical points. You might want to write down that you understand that g prime equals f when it equals zero, um, and the x. Um, so G or something like G has critical points at X equals negative two, three, and six. And then we got to talk about relative minimum. That it's just the point that crosses and touches. Yes. So you have Alexis, you have to look at the zeros first. Okay. On this particular one, if they'd asked me about, um, with this situation, if they'd asked me about um, this, anything second derivative, they asked me about concavity or they asked me about points of inflection, I need to look at the horizontal tangents. So the, and that would be where the, these guys are. They're not asking me about in this one. Okay. Um, determine and the x values were relative min. So I've got a positive to a negative, a negative to a negative, and a negative to a positive. So this is the only place where there's a min. So we would say that g has a relative min, and remember I gave you this warning yesterday, please watch what this says. If it says relative, you're doing a sign chart and explaining it. If it says absolute, do the candidates test with the T-chart, because if not, I saw the opposite happen on one of your one of your uh, peers' tests, and I feel really bad because <laughs> they won't get credit for it. Um, has a relative min, at x equals six because f prime changes from, and you gotta be in the right order, negative to positive at 
that value. Or at would that this be point. G prime or would it still be F prime? Uh, no, it would be, you're right, I'm making a typo. Okay. It would be G prime equals F. See, that's why you're here, Madison. Jeez. I was going to catch all my typos, okay? <laughs> All right, let's look at part C. Um, so we've got G, e, G of negative five. So I'm gonna put negative five into this guy right here. I'm gonna try to squeeze it in. So G of negative five equals um, negative two to negative five of F of T dt. And that equals, um, we gotta swap the order there because with the smaller one is not on the bottom. So I'm going to throw a negative in front and swap the order. And then we know that this is going to be the area formula. So I'm looking at my graph. I'm going from negative five. Um, one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five. So from here to here, interesting triangle, just that little tiny triangle there. Looks like we've got, we know it's a triangle, so it's one half. The, base, which is three times the height, which is one. We've got negative three over two. Okay, so that's G of negative five. Then we've got to do G prime of negative five, which we know that that is equal to F of X. So I'm just gonna read that off the graph. So negative five and F of X is one. This is nice compared to the one we did yesterday. G double prime of five, or actually not at five yet, we gotta do it of X. We haven't calculated that yet. So we got the derivative of this is just gonna be F prime of X. So we're gonna put the negative five into that. And when we, we that means we're looking for the slope here and my slope looks like it's down one and over three. So negative one third. Oh boy, now we need the both the double line chart, don't we, for D. Mm -hmm. So, you should have warned me, I would have done it, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, it's good for us to set up both. So um, Alexis, the question you asked right at the beginning um, about us just needing the places where it crossed the x-axis. So when I see relative min, I see critical points, I see Increasing, decreasing, I know I just need that single layer sign chart, but now we're gonna go into the double layer because it says decreasing and concave up. So I'm gonna do another sign chart, which is gonna do a lot of the same thing. And um, we're gonna look at the G prime, which is the F graph, okay? And, oh, hang on, I gotta plug in my machine. Plug in the secondary machine, it's about to go. Okay, there we go, yeah, all right. Um, so we are looking at, um, so I'm going to write down anywhere where I've got a, the endpoint, a critical number or a horizontal tangent. So I'm writing down all of these places here. Okay. So I just kind of marked them up there, but I'm going to write them down paper I'm looking at. All right. So, um, I'm seeing negative eight to negative two, negative two to zero. Um, zero to three, stop me if I'm wrong, five would be my next one, uh, six, uh, six, and then um, eight and 12. Did I get them all? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're looking at, again, we are looking at starting by looking at above below. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my chart up here. I know I am above from negative eight all the way to negative two, so I know I'm above. Then I'm below all the way from negative two to positive six. So I'm gonna, until I hit the six, I'm gonna say below. And then I am above again for the rest of it. So I'm gonna say above on everything else. All right, now I'm gonna add an extra layer. I should have given myself more space. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the second derivative, which is the first derivative of f. And on this here, we're gonna do, um, so we're looking, now we're looking for increasing or decreasing, okay? So it looks like I am decreasing until I hit negative two. 
So decreasing. And then, oh, look, I'm decreasing again till I hit zero. Then I'm increasing, decreasing. So my next two are increasing, decreasing. And then it looks like I'm increasing until I hit the X value of, it's not scrolling, there we go, until I hit the X value of eight. So increasing, increasing, and then we end with a decreasing. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and look and see what I was supposed to do. Decreasing and concave up. So I want it to be a minus on the top row and a plus on the bottom row. So minus and plus and minus and plus, and that's it, right? Those two intervals. So the nice thing is, is when you do that double layer sign chart, it totally pops out, okay? It makes it so easy. So all we're gonna say is that F, not F, G, is the name of the function. Now, G is decreasing and concave up um, on the intervals from zero to three and five to six because, and you remember it has to be in terms of this guy here because that's the only information you have. G prime equals F is negative and increasing is negative and increasing. All right, now we got to find g of twelve. Am I going too fast? Are we doing okay? Wait, I have. I think I'm just confusing myself. But so the question's asking for where it's decreasing and concave up, but the concavity is the second derivative. Correct and decreasing the first. So I, I guess it's just because like, to get the negatives and the positives on the second row, like you have to look mm -hmm. at increasing, decreasing, that I thought that right. that would be what the problem was asking by asking about decreasing. I'm confused. Yeah. I just answered yeah. my question. You're good? Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> not what it's asking. So the decreasing and increasing helps us tell the concavity because we're starting with the first derivative graph. Mm. Okay? All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good? And Alexis and Brianna, you let me know if you need help, okay? All right, if you've got questions. And if I'm not looking at the chat, yell at me, okay? So I need it today. So, all right, g of 12. Um, so I'm going to do g of 12 equals the integral from um, where am I at? negative 2 to 12 of f of t dt. And since they weren't really giving us a function, we know we've got to just go right to the graph. And I'm going to go from negative 2 all the way to 12, which means I need the areas of those three triangles. And it looks like the first two are below, so we know signed area is negative. So I'm going to start with negative 1 half, the base, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3 for the height, 5 times 3. And then another signed area, so one, two, three, one, two. So one half, three times two. And then a positive above the above the x-axis area, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the height looks like four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so six times four. And stop, you're done. Nothing else to do there. Okay. Oh, here comes one that was like yesterday. Oh, we can yeah, probably, yeah. we can probably, it's, it's on the G though, we can probably cheat a little bit because we've already know some value, we already know some information. Not that we're cheating, we're not, but we know some other information already. So um, they're asking us for an absolute max. Okay, now we did one of these yesterday. Um, Yesterday, we did it for every single value because we hadn't calculated the relative already, okay? Um, so it's safe to do that every time. So if I was going to calculate the it for every single value, we would do, um, so this is my x, this is going to be f of x, and we use our endpoints, and then any of the zeros that we have, right? Yeah, so negative 2, 3, um, 6 and 12. Okay. Now, 
the catch here is, and I guess I don't usually use those lines, but the catch here is that um, if I went and I looked at my sign chart, my original sign chart, and we looked at candidates for, this is a maximum, the only one of those values that's a candidate for a maximum is negative two. So I take that back. Never mind. We're going to do them all because apparently my strategy is not going to work. We're looking for an absolute max on that interval and it ends up actually being this. So we're going to go ahead and do them all. Never mind. All right. So do them all. We're going to integrate from, because this is, oh, no, it says G still. Okay, so this is the integral from negative two to eight. Um, we know we're starting at negative two because again, we're using this guy right here is what we're integrating. So from negative two to eight of F of T dt equals, and we're gonna go, oh, we get first we gotta flip it, right? Cause negative eight smaller, negative eight to negative two, that's gonna throw a negative out front. Okay. Then we have to go back and look at our triangles. So I've got to go negative eight to two, which I think we've already, oh no, we haven't calculated that triangle yet. It looks like a base of six on a height of two. So one half six times two, which is just going to be six, but it is negative because I lost that negative in front there. All right. And then we're gonna go from negative two to negative two. Yay, we like that because that nice. one's just zero. And then we're gonna go from negative two to three, which that's nice because um, that is uh, in the right order. So negative two to three, negative two to positive three is just that triangle. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So one half, we said five times three, right? Which is 15 halves, but it is underneath the axis. So we need it to be, it's signed area is negative. And then, no, I was wrong. We didn't have to do this. All right, I'm looking at their answer now. They drew an arrow from a weird place. It's okay. All right, then we're gonna do six. So negative two to six of F of T dt. Um, so looking at that one, negative two to six is going to be this triangle and that triangle. So we already know this one is the 15 halves. So our negative 15 halves. Um, plus the other one's going to be negative and it was one half three times two, right? One half three times two which would just be negative 15 halves minus three halves, which we're, I think we were looking for maximum. It's not really gonna matter what the answer is because it's negative. All right, and then we finally, we have 12. Negative two to 12 of F of T dt. All right, so that means I'm going all the way now from here all the way to the end. Didn't we do that calculation already somewhere? We did, didn't we? No, we didn't. We did it with a different, oh no, we did. Isn't it right here, this one? We didn't actually oh, yeah, write it out. We just wrote the, we didn't actually do the calculation, we just left it. Yeah. So we know that it is going to be negative 15 halves that we had from the first triangle, the negative three halves from the second triangle, plus it was one half six times four. And I do actually want that calculation, so negative 18 halves looks like i could go into there uh, actually i'm gonna leave it in halves no i'm not um because that one reduces so 12 so plus 12 so negative 9 plus 12 which is 3 and it turns out that this is the maximum right here so you'd say that g has an absolute max at g of 12 equals, how did we not get three halves? They got three halves. What did I do wrong? We got three. And their answer, do you see a mistake anywhere, Madison? 
I thought, well, you and I were doing it different because I had everything in like I had like a negative seven point five and a negative four point five, so I was trying to go back and convert this back to halves to follow along with you, but you had this is seven point five and you had this one is four point five. Mm. And I have a mistake right here somewhere, right? Because I didn't get four point five. I got one point five. Because it would be wait. Just give yourself three. Because it would end up being a three. Yeah, for the six. Wait. Minus three. The 15 halves is solid. We know that. Yeah. Let me and see that what they That area so it ends up being negative 7.5. I agree with what they... I I've agree with they what they have in the middle. Although I don't have the same thing they did here. What happened? They got 15 halves. They got six halves. But when they subtracted this here... Oh, I know what I did. I canceled the twos and I shouldn't have. This should be six halves. So now that makes a difference here. So that's going to make this negative 21 I halves. Wait, what am I? Yeah. I've got it now. I'm going to keep right, this I'm in halves. Gonna... I figured out my mistake. I looked at their answer key. So we're going to keep this as six, two. So that's going to be plus 24 halves, which is going to make it three halves. I'll give you guys a minute. Oh, Paula's here. I'm sorry I was late, Paula. I recorded the beginning and I answered your question that you wanted answered at the very beginning. It was the very first part. So, and I recorded it. So you, I'll put it up for you. Okay. All right. Did we get everything? I don't want to move too, too fast. No. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Well, as long as Madison's got it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> All right. Let's look at G. So we have, and this is, okay, we're almost there on this one. Um, evaluate, um, we're integrating. It looks like we definitely need a U substitution here, okay? So it looks like my U is going to be X squared plus 3, meaning that DU equals 2X DX, and it looks like I'm missing the 2, which means I put a 2 here and a 1 half out there. And then I am going to go ahead and convert my um, my in ba my bounds into u's. So if, if I put in the zero, zero squared plus three, I get three. And then I put in the three, three squared plus three, so nine plus three, twelve. Mm -hmm. So I end up with one half from twelve. Sorry, from three to twelve. From three to twelve of f of, and I'm gonna put a u in for that. And then when I integrate, oh, interesting. Um, when I integrate f, that I know is the same as, in, okay, this is gonna be kind of crazy. Let's see, what did they do? Oh no, yeah, it's the chart, awesome. green graph. I was going, it's equal to g, but no, it's the graph. So we're going to go one half, Ooh, not that, one half, and then I need to look at the shapes in the graph, which I'm going to erase my scribbles and start over here. All right, we've got to go from 3 to 12. So here's 3 all the way to 12. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So negative 1 half times 3 times 2 plus this one was one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So one half, six times four. And I would stop right there. All right. We are going to start. We have to find h prime. I'm going to rewrite it just a little bit first. So this is the same thing as saying f of x to the one half power. So this time we've got it the other way, we've got a chain rule going on. So remember, I'm gonna take the derivative of the inside 
H prime of X. I'm taking the derivative of the inside, which would be A F prime of X. And then I'm going to take the derivative of the outside, but I'm going to leave the inside inside of it. So F, no, that's not right. One half F of, sorry, F of X to the, and then when I subtract one off of this, I get negative one half. I'm going to manipulate that a little bit. So, or actually, yeah, I'm going to manipulate it. F prime of X, um, this two is technically in the denominator. And then this guy is not happy where he's at. Plus, I'm going to put it back under a square root. So F of X. All right. So now I'm going to put in my H prime of 10. So I need F prime of 10 over 2 times the square root of f of 10. I really hope that's a square number. doesn't really matter, though, does it? Um, so f prime of 10 is going to be the slope. I need the slope at 10, and I need whatever the actual value is at 10. So I'm going to go to 10, which is here. So it looks like the slope at 10 is negative 1, and the value at 10 is 2. So I've got negative 1 and 2. So did I get it right? Yes, I did. Oh, good. We haven't done one like I in a really long time. It's a separation of variables. So I did not see this come up on, and it, at the ones I've looked at. Okay, I did have not seen this come up. But I did see a weird goofy slope field thing come up. So if you get the goofy slope field thing, start testing points, okay? Because it was on the, it was an AB test thing. It wasn't on the BC, which I'm kind of a little surprised, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to get my Y to the left side and my DX to the right side. So I'm dividing by that mass. I'll see if I can squish it into this space. So I've got 1 over Y plus 1 squared. And then... Um, on the other side, I have negative 1 12th x dx. So I'm going to integrate both sides. Um, I guess I could use a u sub there, but my u is just going to be the stuff inside, so I'm going to leave it alone. Oh, I forgot my dy. And I'm going to bring it upstairs the way it looks, but with a negative, because it's not a natural log. All right, now I'm ready to integrate. So I'm going to add 1. So you get y plus 1 to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, or I could just throw a negative in front, equals negative 1 12th x squared over 2 plus c or c sub 1 if you want. That's fine. Um, we are supposed to be finding k. It's supposed to be equal to k of x. So eventually we're going to replace y with k of x, but not yet. So we know that this is our initial condition. Lots of different ways we could plug it in. I'm going to plug it in at, right now, okay? So that way I get it done and I get the point for it. Um, at the same time I'm plugging in, I'm going to move this thing downstairs. So it's negative 1 over. And for the y value we're supposed to be putting in is 0. Equals negative 1 12 times 12 squared over 2 plus c sub 1. This side over here looks like negative 1. And then this side, I know I can cancel that, and then this reduces to 6, so it equals negative 6 plus c sub 1, which equals, oh boy, they've got a much bigger mess going than I do. Um, what did they get for c? Their c, they did not get that for c. Did I do anything wrong? Squared over 2. Y to the negative 1 squared over 2 would be their 24. I see negative 1 on theirs, and then they put in 144. Oh, they didn't reduce. Oh, yeah, we're getting the same thing. I like my way better. Theirs is a mess. All right, c sub 1 equals 5. Okay, and then we've got to put that back into this guy right here, but I'm going to pull the this guy back downstairs. So I've got negative 1 over... Um, y plus 1 equals, um, I'm going to rewrite that probably as negative 1 over 24x squared 
plus five. Then I have to get the Y upstairs. So this is one of those little weird trick things, okay? Um, I'm not gonna do the trick thing though. I'm gonna just go ahead and multiply both sides by this thing. So I'm gonna multiply by this guy, um, which would cancel it on this side. Negative one over 24 X squared plus five times this thing here. And then I'm gonna divide by this. So it'd be negative one, I'm just gonna find a spot where you can read it, of negative one over 24 X squared plus five equals y sub one or y plus one. I gotta take the one to the other side. I'm gonna leave the weird ugly mess. 24 x squared plus five minus one equals, which also equals the k of x that they told us to be. Yay, I think we're done with question one. Were there a whole bunch of differences on the BC? Not many, actually. No? Okay, cool. That one probably wasn't on the BC, though, was it? No, not I. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll be on Monday, right? Because that wasn't, it's not that bad. Yeah. All right. Um, the Saturday before Mother's Day, a drugstore has a large selection of greeting cards for sale. How nice of them to put a Mother's Day problem in. <laughs> All right, um, from zero to 10, the number of cards left on the shelf at time T hours at a rate of M prime is measured in cards per hour. The function M is twice differentiable. Um, approximate M double prime of six. Okay, show the calculations that lead to your answer. So you're already in M prime, which means if they ask us to explain it, which I'm seeing in part B, it's a rate of a rate. And I said it wrong the other day, Maddie. I think you asked me about that. And we should have had a rate, another word rate in there, and we did. It was my fault. Oh. Like two or three days ago, we had one. It was should have been a rate of a rate. And we just said we used another word for rate. I wasn't paying close attention. So when you have the, if it's the asking on this one, it's a rate of a rate. It just looks awkward, but that's the right thing. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you'll see when B. Um, M double prime of six is gonna be between these two guys. So um, we're gonna just do that calculation. So M double prime of six equals, so what you're really doing is you're doing M of seven minus M of five over seven minus five or negative 12 minus negative 14 over two which I, could, I should really stop there, right? That's it. That's my rate. Okay. Now I'm supposed to interpret the rate in the context of the problem. Okay. So M double prime of six is, oh, I'm just double checking the rate of parts of the show. So what we, this basically is, is the average rate of change, right? So it's the rate of change. Um, and if you wanna put the measurement in here, you can measured in and the car measured in here, um, but you'll have to do here divided by here. So measured in cards per hour per hour, okay? of, and then you have to explain what was M prime, which was probably shown, it was here. M prime is the number of cards left on the shelf changing at that rate. So of the rate, the number of cards left on the shelf, is changing and then we haven't addressed the specific time which is um, six at t equals six hours okay then we've got to look at c we got to write equation of a tangent line we hope we get an equation of a tangent line um, so, cause that's, that's nice stuff, right? Um, we got a right equation at T equals seven. So we need two things. We need a point, we need a slope. 
we know the slope at 7 is negative 12. So that's actually negative 12. Um, oh, and look at what they gave us here. They told us that the point is 744. So nice, easy peasy. We like it. Um, they didn't really give us a tan. They said to approximate m of 9. All right, so. I would say something like y minus my y value 44 equals the slope negative 12 x minus 7. I would probably write the statement something where you'd say let y equal m of x. So that way I can replace the m of x or the y with m of x. So I'm going to move the 44 to the other side. So y equals uh, negative 12 times x minus, and the only reason I'm moving this is because they're asking me to put in the 9 plus 44. And then I'm going to set this also equal to m of x. So I can write this properly. So now I can say m of 9 equals negative 12 times 9 minus 7 plus 44, and I stop. All right. They gave us lots to practice, didn't they? All right. Is there a type of, I remember seeing that it was like, even on the 15 minute problem, they gave you like way more than they would in a normal 15 minute problem because they're trying to get you to show as much calculus as you can. Okay. Because maybe there's a part you're not going to know how to do and you keep going to the next part. Okay. Um, is there a time? Our answer is always yes. Um, we have to decide if we're doing MVT or IVT. Um, it looks like I have a second derivative and my original here is in first derivative. So I know that I have to be doing MBT because that it changes from a second to a first. So, yes. Okay. Um, but we need to say something by that um, M, it's M is the name of the thing everywhere, right? M is differentiable, which implies m is continuous. So by the mean value theorem, um, there is at least one value C such that um, M prime, double prime of C equals, and then you got to actually do the calculation and actually do one C or do you want it? Yeah. So this would be, and you have to do the M prime of seven minus M prime of four over seven minus four, which I don't think we did that one over seven minus four. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our chart. Seven is negative 12 and four is negative 12. Ooh, interesting. So negative 12 minus negative 12 over three, which happens to be zero over three or zero, which is yay what we were supposed to be showing. How are we doing ladies, everybody all right? Wait, so why did you use four instead of zero? Because, um, I don't know. That's what they showed me in the in their thing. Um, M is twice differentiable, continuous on zero to ten, and therefore on four to seven. I wonder what happens if I have if I try four to if I try. Let's try the zero really quick. I bet if I don't if I use the zero, I don't get um, zero. Yeah, you don't. That's why I got really okay. confused when I did because this problem's on the BC test. Okay. So um, it's so what let's let's just look at really quick what it is when you get zero. So when I do m of seven minus m of zero, um, and there probably should have been more in here that I ignored. Uh, this is zero on the bottom, not a four. Thank you. All right, so m of seven was the negative twelve. M of zero is negative fifteen, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely getting like three sevenths. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my goal, I know that this has to happen, right? Because it's the mean value theorem and I have to get it to work. 
So if I did this calculation and I use those endpoints and I didn't get a get whatever they asked me for, which in this case was a zero, I need to go hunt for where it is a zero. Okay. Okay. Because you have to prove that it works. Okay. Um, we probably should have, I'm noticing what they did in there is because I just kind of skimmed it. Um, so really we should probably say it's continuous and differentiable on, and they gave us zero to 10. And then they also told me in here, and I'm going to write really small, and therefore on four to seven, it is also because that, because we reduced the interval to one that worked. You see where I kind of squished it in right here. Oops, deleting stuff now. Oh, already. Okay. So if you've got, you've got it, it might be better. The more, again, the more robust you can be with that, probably the better. Okay. I'm really glad I don't have to do that one twice. So Miss Ballard, what you're saying yeah. is like, even though like you don't get it on the interval, like in this case from zero to seven, you can use a different interval within the interval that is given? Correct. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So just if it doesn't work on the given one, go back and find one that it does. And there should be one that it does. Okay. Most of the time they aren't tricky like this. Okay. But I'm glad they put the tricky one in there because then if it is on the test day, it shows up, you know what to do. Okay. All right. Part E. So we know that we've got, let me find something totally different color. Uh, we got to evaluate it. Um, again, always, always, always evaluate your numerator and your denominator separately. You can always put them back together if they're not um, equal to zero. Okay. Um, and do not, whatever you do, do not do the quotient rule right here. Okay. Put that in your head. And Mrs. Ballard said no quotient rule. Okay. All right. So we have to do the limit as T approaches seven of M of t minus t squared plus five. And so we know that that's gonna be m of seven minus seven squared plus five. And then let's see, m of seven, which they tell us in the chart is negative 12. So negative 12 minus 49 plus five, something's going wrong. What? 49 plus five. Oh, 44. What did I write down? I wrote down, oh, I wrote down M prime of seven, but M of seven is 44. Let's write down the right stuff. Okay. And that's plus 44, not minus 44, which ends up equaling zero. So our numerator is zero. We've got to look at the denominator now. So the limit as t approaches 7 of 14 minus 2t. So 14 minus 2 times 7 is again 0. So yay, we know Lahopital applies. We know what to do. So I'm going to do Lahopital's rule. So I'm just keeping my limit out front because technically I don't know the limit yet. Um, so we would have m prime of t minus 2t, the 5 goes away because it's 0, the 14 goes away because it's 0 over negative 2, and yay, it's only one Lahopital because the denominator went away, okay, other than the negative 2. We have a variable left in the denominator, it still sometimes makes us go again. So we need m prime of 7 minus 2 times 7 over negative 2, and m prime of 7, this time is from the chart, is negative 12. So negative 12 minus 2 times 7 over negative 2. Done. Yay. OK. We got to use a right Riemann sum with four subintervals. Maddie, on yours, is the average value? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So what do you have to put out front for average value? The 1 over b minus a. Yeah, so you need to, yours is going to have a 1 7th in front. Is it still a right Riemann sum with four? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the right Riemann sum part. You add the one seventh out front. M prime of T D T. Okay. So we, I'm going to set up for four sub intervals. Okay. And we know we are multiplying. We have to show this the sum of multiplications, basically. The sums of the rectangles being multiplied. All right. Coming at it from the right. 
And again, I'm going to erase this because I've got a lot of scribbles on it. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So I'm going to come at it from this height and this distance. So 12 and negative 12 and 2. And then negative 14 and 1. And then negative 12 and 3. And then negative 10 and 1. Okay, and that's it, stop. Maddie, just make sure you have it in big parentheses and one seventh out front. Yeah, no, I uh, I looked back at the problem and uh, it doesn't say average value. So it I doesn't? Just, I just subconsciously slapped the one seventh out there. So yeah, be careful. Points. <laughs> yes, don't lose the points, but be careful because um, BC, it's more likely to say average. Mm -hmm. So, and this year, you guys go back and find one. I know we've done one this week. This is midpoint, and make sure you can do the midpoint. Midpoint seemed to be slammed, but it pro Monday it'll probably be something else, right? The midpoint did seem to be popping up on things. So, I would review your trapezoid as well, okay? Um, so, I just make sure I know both of them. All right. G says that we have to evaluate the integral. Um, M double prime seven minus three T DT show the calculation of the E to your answer. And we need a U substitution. So U equals seven minus three T, which means that DU equals negative three DT. So that means I need a negative three here, which means I need a negative one third out front. So when I integrate this, oh, and I should really change my U's too, huh? So u equals 7 minus 3 times 0, which is 7. And u equals 7 minus 3 times 1, which is 4. So I have negative 1 third from 7 to 4 of m double prime of u du. Don't like the way that looks. I got to reverse this order. So I'm going to swap. I'm going to change it to a negative negative, which is going to go positive from 4 to 7 of m double prime of u du. Now this time I have a table, so I'm actually gonna do the integration. So I have one third. When I integrate m double prime, I get m prime of u from seven to four, which means I'm gonna have one third m prime of, I wrote those backwards, didn't I? Okay. Um, m prime of seven minus one third m prime of four. So I'm gonna grab those numbers out of the table, which is one third m prime of seven is negative 12 and a four is negative 12 minus one third negative 12. Okay. All right. We are given this wonderful new graph and we're gonna let h of t equal m of t times p of t where p can be modeled by the graph above. We need to find h prime of seven. So it looks like we've got a good old product rule. Gotta love the product rule. All right, so h prime of t equals derivative of the red m prime of t. Keep the green the way it is. Keep the red original. Derivative of the green is P uh, prime of T. Okay. Let H be, P can be modeled by the graph above. Okay, so this is the graph of P. Gotta be careful with that. Okay, so. Uh, now we got to plug in h prime of 7. So that means I need m prime of 7, p prime, p of 7 plus m of 7 times p prime of 7. Um, m prime of 7 is back up at the top. So m prime of 7, I should have memorized by now, was negative 12. Okay, p of 7, I'm going to read right off this chart. So 5, 6, 7 is one, two, three, four, five. M of seven, they told us, that's the guy they told us right here that we've used a couple times, 44. 
And then P prime of seven means I need the slope of the graph, oh, P, P here. So this slope, which looks like it is up one over two, so times one half. Now we're done with that with AB at least. So my 80 ladies, do we have any other questions, comments, concerns about Monday? What time are we supposed to, what time does the test start? 10.30 still, right? No. No, test it's in the starts. afternoon this time. Gross. Uh, test starts at 1. 14. You need to be logged on by 12.30. Oh, I will meet you at noon. I'll try to send out some reminders, and I'll set big alarms on my phone so I don't forget my day. <laughs> Follow Ms. Ms. Ballard, is it possible if we can do some scatter plots review tomorrow? You want to do some review tomorrow? For, uh, for scatter plots. Scatter plots. You mean um, you mean uh, slope fields? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I will try to come up because you're talking about the question you saw, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, we will. What you really, we really need to do. I'll find. There's a worksheet out there that I've used, and basically, you need to test all the values. But I can come on tomorrow for a little bit if you want and do that. Yes, I, please. I know tomorrow's Sunday. What time on Sunday are you ladies available? Um, anytime, really. <laughs> I don't want to run into church. <laughs> so, do you want me to do afternoon again? That would probably work out best. Okay, one o'clock. Sure. Two o'clock. Yeah. One o'clock. One o'clock. Okay, and you guys yell at me again if I forget. <laughs> I will put calculus on. <laughs> at 1 p.m. and then I will um, happily come on and then I, if there's anything else you guys can think of that you want me to do um, let me know if you if you email it to me I can kind of have a little bit of a heads up and have something ready but I will come up I will see when we get off if I, I'll write myself hopefully a note over here that I need to write find, figure out the slope field stuff okay? thank you you're welcome is there anything else that Alexis or Brianna you need? Okay. Then I will see my AB ladies tomorrow around one. Okay. You're welcome. All right, Maddie. Let's do this. Um, let me grab the BC. You, you, were you keeping track? Uh, which ones were the same? Yeah. I only got the idea that I probably should have been doing that halfway through question two, so no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's all right. It's not like I had, I had, so what we did was we went to the blueberry farm. Then we mm -hmm. went to, and then my husband went to Costco and I, I brought the boys home. We took two cars. So um, I am, uh, whatchamacallit. So I was tired because I did all of that, but then I put a whole bunch uh -huh. of stuff counter I was supposed to like cut up the old fruit that was getting old in the garage and turn it into something delicious before it all went bad right um, and then we also found out that the, the figured out that the freezer in the garage defrosted because we like have a full fridge and a full freezer out in the garage yeah, so we, we lost some stuff on the top shelf so we were dealing with that and after that I'm like I'm done I'm taking a nap so <laughs> 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 But Davey and Mikey were taking naps, so I just did, I'm like, I'm just going to do 10 minutes on the sofa, and usually I'm really good. I, like, wake up 10 or 15 minutes later, and apparently <laughs> I slept a lot longer than that. Did you see the rocket go off, though? No, I don't know how I forgot about that. Yeah, it was, it went off about, I want to say it went off at, like, 11.30 this morning-ish. So, oh, wow. it was 11.30, right, but then, yeah, because they got back from Costco just in time for, like, it to be, like, the last 10 minutes. So, we watched the last 10 minutes or so, and then the whole 10 minutes of it being in the air at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sure if you look on YouTube, you'll find it. Oh, yeah. So. What are they doing again? Sending a couple guys to the space station? They sent, is the first time um, since 2011 an American rocket has left the United States for the space station. Oh. So the last time it went off, it was a space shuttle. Uh -huh. And we were getting on a cruise. Ellie was three. We were, and I was pregnant with Andy. We were getting on a cruise in um, Port Canaveral, which is where they um, shoot it off from. And we missed it by a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what you were telling me. Yeah. And then um, 
But this, so they, this time they had to delay it because of weather, but then the weather cleared up. They thought they were going to delay it again this morning and it cleared up apparently. Mm -hmm. So, because Ellie got me all excited. It's going to go off and I totally forgotten about it. And I'm like, well, I'm glad mm -hmm. they, they got home so I could, so <laughs> we could see it. So, because they were, Ellie was super interested in it, Andy a little bit more so, or a little bit less so, but. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like the first A, B, C, D are the same, right? And E. No, wait, wait, B's, wait. Oh, they're just in a different order. Oh, they're in a different order, but we did it already, right? Yeah. They didn't do the critical points on this one. But we've done the first five. I think we did that one too, didn't we do F? Am I having a stroke right now? What the? Why do I remember just doing the M double prime the C one on the A B? What's wrong? My brain's just being weird. I don't know why I'm actually dead today. So A is B on the A B one. C is. Wait, C what? on the AB one, but the one that's the open and Oh my gosh. I'm looking at question two. G. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not one. the only one. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm awake. Here we go. Okay. So, um, then we did we're looking at the we did we did F two, didn't we? F was G. Yeah. And E was H. So it looks like we just have to do the last three. Is that right? Average value. Yeah, we did that one. We did that one. F. Yeah, we did F. I made a stupid mistake on that one. But I'm still so mad. I don't know. Because there have been problems where before, like, you get stuff like that. And you're like, okay, well, I can't integrate, like, a base function that they didn't give me any other information about. And so you look on the graph, and it's just area. They gave us a bunch of cute little triangles. I don't know why it didn't click that all of a sudden from there. So I, I just I slapped it squared on it, and I'm like, I'm not doing this right. So I just left it for the next one. <laughs> but it's like, I'm just I'm just a little off my game today. They did give us cute little triangles. I like that you think they were cute yes. little triangles. That was nice, right? I know. Is there anything to deal with? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Look at number, look at I. I is interesting, isn't it? I was disgusting. I attempted it, though. I don't know if I got the right answer, though. Well, that's good. I'm glad you attempted it. Let's see, question one. Okay, so let's do average value real quick. Did you get the average value one? Did we, wait, wait, yes, I did. Let me get on that paper. Yes, I did. Okay, so I, I don't need to do that one. Did you do no. our point? Wait for G. Yeah, do you want me to read you the answer? Wait, there's no arc length on G. That's H. No, I'm talking about uh, H. I moved oh, on. Oh, I thought you were talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you mean you don't know how I think yet? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no. All right. So average value, you're okay, right? Yeah. And basically you had to do the 1 over 20, and then you did all the areas of rectangles, right? Or triangles. Yeah. Okay, so we're good there. All right, write but do not evaluate arc length. So we know that that's got to go from zero to three. You yeah. know, we need the square root one plus, it's the derivative of G squared, right? That's it? That's it, right? Uh, G, actually, G prime squared, but what did they do? Um, write but do not evaluate an integral expression. They went one step further because we know that G prime is equal to um, so I don't know if you would need both. Because that's okay. I started with uh, I I started, but I crossed it out when I slapped the F in there. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know. I just didn't I didn't want them to think like I don't know if the readers would think you that would have, I you have to make that connection by doing this. Yeah. Okay. So and I should you have so to make the connection somewhere that you understand G prime is equal to F. Okay. Okay. As long as you've done that, you're probably fine. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, the next one. I got. I got k of eight equals ten. Is that even remotely close to the answer? Um. There's. 
there's a 10 in part of the answer. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh. A is equal to 10. What did I, I didn't even know what to do with this one. I just slapped a zero in there. Oh, Mikey. Say hi. 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 Guess what he got today? A, a, a vest? Is that? A life jacket. Oh. You gonna go throw him off a boat or something? Is everything okay? Well, we're planning a trip to Wyoming to see my parents. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna probably right. go like canoeing or kayaking or something. And um, so right. we think little guys needed vests. So it was cheaper <laughs> to buy them. Plus, <laughs> my in-laws do have a boat, so we could go. Uh -huh. Yeah, almost. But this one hasn't left my side fishing. the entire day. Are you gonna go fishing? Yeah, a yeah. fire Yeah? Yeah, is that exciting to go fishing? Yeah. Okay, all right, can you wave goodbye to Madison and go see what daddy's doing, please? Because mommy's gotta get a few more problems done, okay? I can't have you on my lap while I do this, okay? You know what, do you wanna go get here? Do you wanna, you want some homework to do? Here, you do this. You take this, and you take this pencil, and why don't you go sit over at the desk over there and do your schoolwork, okay? Okay. All right. So, we are doing, um, we got to find K of 8. So, I'm just going to plug K of 8 in there. So, K okay. mm -hmm. sum as n equals 10 to infinity of 10 times f of... Eight. Mom, mom. Yes, f of eight. Mom. Hey, Mikey. Shh. Over six to the n power. Mm. All right. So we are supposed to figure out, and we know that this is um, okay. So f of eight. Do we know what f of eight is? Yeah, it's four. It's four. Okay, great. So we're gonna plug that in there. So we know we've got this sum as n equals zero. Infinity from 10 for 6 to the n. So which kind of series do we have? Uh, geometric. Geometric, right? Um, and r is equal to? 1 over a minus r. 1 over, right? Is What's that... the r value? Wait, what do you mean? Wait, why are you like? Oh, no, it's 4, 6. 4, 6. I... 4, there you go. Hurts, right? Uh-huh. You're giving that me the formula. You're on the right track, but <laughs> we're not there yet. All right, and then the a value has to be the technically the number in front, but we got to always check, watch that, put that in, put the zero in, make sure that it really is that number in front. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you are going the exact right place because you do need to calculate that sum, which remember that it's one over, a oh, sorry, a over one minus r. Dang so my it. a <laughs> is ten minus one over minus one minus one minus two thirds that's it stop there okay i don't know where you, oh, how you got to look at that's it yeah i for yeah that whole little chunk of thinking right there like i looked at it and i knew it was a geometric series i just didn't know what to do with that information so i just slapped a zero in for the end and i'm like oh so the four six is just one so it's just ten <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> But, you look at the sum of the entire thing, not just the first one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's check out the second one. I'm glad I didn't do this twice today, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, looks like A was A, right? Mm -hmm. Or A was, uh, we've done A, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the right thing. Get my life in order here. Um, it looks like so A the, was B. Their B was A, right? And well, wait, wait, B was so on A B. No, on A B, okay. I'm I'm going. A, B, so you're A B to B C right now. R A. So this was A B yes. B. And then this one I'm seeing is A B D. D. Yeah. And this one is A, B, E. E. And then this one is A, B, F, right? Yeah. Okay, and then M of that was weird. They donked up four. G because they gave you that, so that one's different. 
And then we've got an Euler and a Taylor. And oh, it looks like H might be, no. Oh, they gave you logistic. Okay, this one's all different from there. That's good though. This is a lot of stuff we haven't reviewed in a while. Mm. All right, so from E, and of course they have like pages, half of a page of red for this one. Okay, I always love it when I do answer keys in red, don't you? Mm -hmm. I super hate the color red. Mm. <laughs> See that right. deep uneasy not, You know that it's not just because it's Hemet High. So, oh jeez. When, when I was in, um, I use that excuse a lot, but when I was in elementary school from third grade to sixth grade, I had to go to, I went to a private school. It was like a little parish, like Catholic little private school in the town I grew mm -hmm. up in. And it was in the high desert. And um, it was, so it was a hundred degrees outside a lot of most days. And I had to wear red corduroy every day. Oh no. So that's why I truly hate the color red. Oh no. <laughs> Because I had to wear a uniform, so my uniform was a white shirt and red corduroy bottoms. So either a skirt or a, or pants. At least I got to wear a skirt. The boys had to wear brown corduroy pants all the time. Yikes! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Walk half a mile and start a forest fire. Yeah. So um, yeah. So needless to say, I hate the color red. <laughs> that is perfectly understandable. All but right. They used to have it high things, so now so. <laughs> Just so you don't have to. Yeah. Go the, the cord right. <laughs> well, I can, but you know, it doesn't bother me. All right, so this is oh, this has got to be way weird because you can't use a U sub, can you? No, because that's not um, the derivative of that isn't present when we got that T. So, what do we have to use? Uh, ultraviolet voodoo. Yes, we got to use our UV. Okay, so U is going to still be the U is going to be the T, right? Mm -hmm. Which DU means it's DT. Okay, and then V is gonna, or D, sorry, DV is gonna be a little bit crazy because we've got the, it's gotta be this guy, seven minus three T D T. But do you see how there's the U sub in it? Mm -hmm. So I would, when I integrate that, I'm gonna have to have a negative one third M prime of seven minus three T. Does that make sense or do I need to do the U sub? No, it's fine. Okay, just making sure. Mm. I know in BC we're more sophisticated, so. Jeez. All right. Um, so I know I've got to do um, UV. So T uh, V is this mess, one third M prime of seven minus three T. And I've got to do that from zero to one. Minus V which, sorry, V is still this guy, negative one-third M prime of seven minus three T DT. Okay, so this guy stays the way it is, T M prime of seven minus three T from zero to one plus one-third. When I integrate that, I'm gonna have another one-third pop up because, or another negative one-third pop up, right? And then when I integrate the M prime, I get back to M of the mess inside from zero to one. So now we got to plug in the ones and the zeros. So I have one third times one M prime of seven minus three, which is just going to be four, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's think about the zero because I'm going to, I'm into writing less work right now. When I put this zero into that, what's going to happen? It's going to, can't we, oh, it's, it's everything's just going to go zero. It's all going to go zero. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to let it be zero. Okay. All right. Then this thing is going to be minus one ninth M of, let's see. So I put the one into that and I get a four again, right? And then I have to subtract negative one ninth M of six seven this time because I still have um, when I put the zero in I still I still I, it doesn't cancel on that one mm -hmm. all right so I do need to plug those values in so it looks like I've got negative one third m prime of four so let's go back to our chart m prime of four is negative 12 
And then negative one ninth, M of four, if I remember right. No, that's M of seven. They told it to us somewhere. Here it is. It's a hundred. Wait, M of seven? M of four. Oh, okay. And then plus one ninth, and then M of seven was in the original stem. It's right there, 44. Mm. Done. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. No. Okay. Euler's method. We should be getting good at this one. Yeah, I. Because I got it a little jammed on the first couple ones because I I only had time to run through the BC test. I timed myself, uh -huh. but now I'm wishing I would have started at like the last half banked points like that. Well, and you can do that. Don't forget that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to set up your paper ahead of time and leave mm -hmm. yourself space for all of them. That way you can go do any part you want and then you know what you've done and what you haven't done. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you've turned in that first paper, I would take that those pages and set them aside so you don't mix them up when you're trying to take pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you practiced yet with the um with the the genius scan? No. Genius scan. Okay, you need to do that today. Yeah, I do. Okay. And then and practice and go through the upload through College Board too. Okay, so you're comfortable because you want to be comfortable with it. Yes. All right, Euler's method, two steps. So we know we've got to start with, um, they do this weird chart thing that I don't understand their chart thing. Maybe if I'd watched their videos on it, I would understand it. Mm -hmm. um, M of, we're starting with, it said to start with seven. So M of seven equals 44. Okay. Uh, hey, buddy, I can't have you on my lap right now. Go do your homework at the table. Okay. Or do you want to go sit on that side and do it? Yeah, go sit on that side and do it, okay? All right. So then I need to get all the way to three and only in two steps. So what does that mean this middle one has to be? Five. Five, okay. So I know I need M of seven plus, right? M of, it's plus, isn't it? It's supposed to be plus. Yeah, so it'd be plus yeah. and then M prime of seven. M prime of seven times the step size, which is two. two. Okay, so M of seven, they told us at the beginning is 44. 44. Oh, and it's right above, right? Mm -hmm. Plus we need M prime of seven, which is gonna come out of the table, which is negative 12 mm -hmm. times two. And we actually have to do the calculation. So 44 minus 24, 20. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, that's not what they got. They got 68. No, they got 20. What did they do? What? 12 times 2 is 24. Oh, we're adding, it must be, is it minus then maybe? Well, because, well, no, because we're, we were adding, but we were adding a negative because the 12 is negative. What did they do? I wonder if it's a minus the step size. I thought it was a plus the step size. Let me look up Euler's method really quick because I'm totally confusing myself. Euler's method. Mom. I thought so too. It, does it show them subtracting 12 or subtracting a negative 12? It says that they got 44. Oh, it's negative 2 is the step size. That's where the problem is. Oh. Because we went, we decreased. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was going to be really bad. Yes. Okay. So I'm like, something's going wrong here that we're not catching. All right. So that's now, we, now we're at 68. Mm -hmm. That's why we have their answer key. Yes. But we don't blow it, right? All right. Mm -hmm. So this has to be M of 5 plus M prime of 5 times negative 2. And then so 68 plus hopefully M prime of 5 is in the chart. It is yeah. negative. 14 yay go back up negative 14 times ne and just stop yeah all right g um it is known that m double prime of seven is equal to the average rate of change oh interesting it's an interesting way to connect it so didn't i need to find like this? what didn't we do one like this yesterday I don't think we it connected someone. quite this way. Mom. Mom. I can't talk right now. If you want to talk to somebody, go find a sibling or a father. There's lots of them out there. No. Well, it sounds like dad's on the phone. Go bug him. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if we did. Maybe, did you try that extra one that was out there? That extra day 15? I didn't look at day 15. No, I haven't done that one yet. Okay. All right. So now that M double prime of seven is equal to average rate of change. So I don't think we've seen one where they'd said something like this, where we have to set it equal to the average rate of change and then write the second degree Taylor. So we have to do your your favorite, A rock. Mm -hmm. so, um, didn't we already do that calculation? Like, um, I don't know. We might have. Um, I'm not even doing yeah, it right. Yeah, it ended up being... Yeah, negative 12 plus... Yeah, it's three-sevenths. It's three-sevenths? Okay, yeah, so we did that in part... Well, it was part B for this one. It was the, the MVT one. Okay, so from par. Are you sure that was the zero to seven though? Yeah, not not the not the four to seven. Okay. I, I ended up doing the whole enchilada first, and then that's when I asked about the four. Oh yeah yeah okay. It was in the MVT. Okay, so we're sure that it is three sevenths, and they're saying so. This is from part B, right? Mm hmm. Okay, so for Taylor, we know that we've got to do. Um, and I don't know if you want to use notation on this, but they said the polynomial of two of t, if you want to use a t of t, whatever. Um, so m of seven plus m prime of seven times, they, instead of using x's, they're using t's in this. I don't know why. Probably because it says average rate of change versus just a Taylor polynomial. Mm. I'm not sure it would super matter. Um, so t minus seven and then plus m double prime of t minus seven squared over two factorial, which m of seven we know is um, 44 from earlier, right? Mm -hmm. m prime of seven is negative 12 from the chart times t minus seven. And then m double prime of seven you just told me is three sevenths times t minus seven squared over two factorial. Yay done, right? Mm -hmm. H looks fun. Well, do you, you have to know a little bit about logistic it looks like. So let's see, your mm -hmm. store, across the street is also selling Mother's Day cards. Time oh, yeah. to get satisfied by this logistic Whoa. differential. Whoa. You need to be quiet. I've only got like one problem left, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, find the rate that the store is selling cards in cards per hour at the moment when the store is selling cards the fastest. Okay. Um, so we need to figure out when the store is selling cards the fastest, and then we plug that value in. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... The store sends the cards the fast. So what do we know about logistic equations? What's this right here? That's your L. And when yes. that, when you divide that by two, that's when it's at the, its fastest. Yay! I pulled that out of the depths of my brain hole. That was <laughs> awesome. I didn't even... Look at me. Good job. Okay. <laughs> so, um... They are just basically saying, uh, so <laughs> I would just say fastest when uh, y equals 142 divided by 2 equals 71. Okay? Mm. All right. Um, so I'm going to basically get to put the 71 into this logistic equation there. Mom, okay? I did it. So... Um, it's D Y D T. You did it. Great. Do do another one. <laughs> All right. Three fourths times seventy one times one minus seventy one over one forty two. And then don't forget to write cards per hour. Oh, we should have probably done this. Y equals seventy one to be proper. Done. That was a lot easier than it looked. Yeah. So. See, I know stuff. What I was stressing out when I first started this because I don't. I just need to calm down when I like.